And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, standing six feet even, weighing in officially 170 pounds. Finding out of Dayton, Ohio, here is Chris, the card collector, Wes! Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Chris here, Macy Collectibles. We finally made it. We're here on Monday, Monday Mailbag. We've got, uh, let's see, a ton of questions to get to today. As promised, I'm going to be covering four uh, total questions here. Oh, by the way, I'm using a mic today, so let me know if the audio is any better. I actually listened to my uh, last video for the first time using headphones, and the sound like pans back and forth. I said panorama. Pans back and forth uh, between your ears. I'm surprised none of you all have said anything yet. Uh, most of y'all must just be too polite, but that was, that's crazy. That's kind of hard to listen to. So hopefully let me know if this is any better. This mic, uh, should give you both of your ears the same volume, uh, at the same time. If that makes any sense, if you haven't been wearing headphones, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about and you'd like me to press forward. So we're going to do that. All right, let's see. This mat, I tell you, I was bitching about this last video, but let me show you. I'm going to turn this light off. This is what it looks like uh, from my view. So it's not so bad. You can see here a little something, but pop that light on. It's like, man, looks like hotel bed sheets. You're wasting his time and my time and your own time. But anyhow, we're going to be jumping into this. Oh, let me mention uh, October 30th. There will be the next group break. I'm very happy to announce the continuation of group breaks. So on October 30th, there will be a group break and back by popular demand. You all have been sending me emails uh, asking for it to be. So it is going to once again be a 2019 Topps Chrome. So any of you rainbow chasers or chrome lovers out there, make sure you head over to MaceCollectibles.com, Mace Collectibles on ebay and grab yourself a spot there are going to be nine spots they are only going to be eight dollars a piece uh in each spot guarantees you a weight class and you will receive all the cards who contain fighters who fight within said weight class hey keep in mind it's not um it's never no matter what set we're opening during any group break when we whatever weight class you have uh when the fighters come up it's not like, say, Darren Till, for instance. If you've got a 2019 Darren Till, it's going to be welterweight. Uh, we all know he now fights at middleweight. So if you're the middleweight guy, you're not going to get Darren Till from 2019. It's going to be whatever's on the card. Wherever they were fighting when the card was made is where it's going to go. And that helps prevent any kind of arguments or confusion. So what the card says is who gets it. <clears throat> so check that out, $8. You can't beat that. Uh, and I appreciate again all of you who hung with me here and that's kind of a little way to give back i'll i'll uh, lose a little money on that one so anyhow that's the way it's going to be uh october the 30th i believe that should be a friday and we will hammer that out <clears throat> all right let's see here this week we got four questions you guys have been sending me some amazing questions to my uh, email, macecollectibles at gmail.com. Really appreciate it. Some of them have really uh, made me think and had to do a little research. Uh, I did not select any of those. The reason being is uh, for these first couple weeks here, I'm just mostly going to be kind of covering more basic things, uh, basic questions. There's a lot of people who are new to the channel and uh, new to collecting. Uh, at the same time so for those of you who've been you know in the game for a little while this may not be super interesting for you but uh, for anyone else hopefully you can pick something up and you know investigate it for yourself and decide what is best for you Shut the f up so we can get this over with all right here we go question numero uno if you don't know how this works so I'm gonna be reading a question uh, that was sent in and giving my opinion on it, and then the person wins a free card. Real simple stuff. Here we go. Question number one. Hi, Chris. I was wondering how the centering of autographs can affect card prices, as well as the numbered cards having a higher 
uh, or lower number is a lower number generally considered more desirable for collectors a 5 of 25 compared to a 20 of 25 for example also do you have a favorite auto based purely on how neat their auto is my number is 69 thanks mystery person actually this was from alex i'm not going to say your last name but alex thank you for your question and let me show you what alex is talking about all right so i have grabbed mr cormier here uh, and so when you look at an autograph, what he's talking about centering is just uh, exactly what it sounds like. How centered is this auto? As you can see, this auto starts a little bit off to the left here. Um, it's still a great auto, but centering means, again, just what it sounds like. How centered is the autograph? Okay. Now there's other factors that come into play. And the answer to that is yes, it does affect it. It does affect price. Now how much? Well, it depends. If any of you saw, I wish I had it, I still, I don't, someone bought it, but I had a Mike Perry autograph that was atrocious. Uh, I actually listed it as the title was the worst Mike Perry autograph of 2019 Chrome. Um, now for some people, it doesn't matter. An auto is still always gonna fetch value, so on and so forth. But when you get into uh, maybe, uh, I would certainly say there's a correlation between card value um, and how much that matters. For instance, if you have, say you had a, two Babe, Babe Ruth autographs, right? And one was worth a million dollars and it was a nice centered, great autograph. And the other one uh, had some issues. You're gonna be talking about uh, massive dings to the price. So it really, it really just depends on how much the card is worth. When you're talking about cards under $50, centering, all that, it, it's never gonna matter there's going to be collectors who might pass on it um, just because they you know only collect specific uh, grade autographs so to speak in their mind but in general unless you're talking about a more a higher dollar card uh, you know over a hundred at least I would say then uh, the autograph isn't too big of a deal but some of the other things they'll look for is consistency that matters typically uh, it seems to me with UFC cards, especially, to matter sometimes more than even um, centering. So if you look here, because the picture can affect how, how the centering would look anyhow, and if the auto would look best in that spot. But uh, if we look here at Daniel, if you look at the D, just look at the D, ignore the rest of the signature and just look at the D. You can see there, very, very similar loop. Look at that loop. It's nice, it's rounded. Uh, it's a nice, you know, smooth flow of a signature. <clears throat> Here's another one. Different card all together. So you can see those D's all look really good. If you take a look at this D, look at the D on that one. Makes me f***ing sick. Not so hot. So things like that absolutely matter, especially it can come to light if you're selling, say you were trying to sell a rainbow and you know, your, one of your D's look like that. Uh, you might turn people off. Again, it's gonna matter a lot more uh, as the card value itself goes up, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like pre-signature uh, or just having the card with an auto uh, unseen that value is going to be what's correlated to uh, how much it matters, whether the auto is centered or if there's a mistake, so on and so forth. So for those who don't know, uh, now you know. So yeah, it matters, but again, it's all about pricing. It's all about uh, value prior to inspecting the autograph as far as how much of an impact it'll have. Uh, you also asked, is a lower number generally considered more desirable, a 5 of 25 compared to a 20 of 25? Yes and no. Some people don't care. Um, other people definitely care. I definitely know collectors where, you know, the lower number. I would say that the rule of thumb is kind of the unspoken rule of thumb is that for sure, the lower the number, the more valuable the card. That's especially true if you can get a one of something like a one of 25, uh, a one of 50, and so on and so forth. That's always going to be more valuable, at least in my experience and, and what I've always seen in the card market, regardless of sport, the number one is always going to fetch more. So yes, uh, that is true. Again, some people don't care, but uh, it definitely does matter. And when you're pricing your cards, it's a good idea to keep that in mind. You know, the lower the number, the better. Uh, 
But on the flip side of that as well, if it's out of 25 and you have the 25 out of 25, um, people like that as well. So it kind of just depends. There's a, you know, there's a collector, like I said before, if you can think of it, somebody collects it. Uh, so, you know, there's people who collect bad autographs. It just, whatever tickles your fancy. All right. <clears throat> we are going to... All right, we are going to, oh, there's our camera bump. Uh, number is 69, so we are going to jump in the magic box real quick right here. And count to 69, I'm going to fast forward. One. It is a Carla Esparza 2018 Topps Chrome Refractor. Bam, bam, bam. Congratulations. What was your name, Alex? Alex. There you go. Carlos Sparza. That's going to you, bud. Appreciate it. Better luck next time. Not the best card, not the worst card. Ooh. All right. Here we go. All right. And here we go. This is from Jason. Hi, I just found your YouTube channel. I'm really loving the content. I need some. There's so much stuff out there for the big four sports, but it's really hard to find quality content on the UFC. My question for the mailbag is, what are your thoughts on long-term value for action fighters? Guys who maybe never even fought for a belt, but who had some longevity and were always in wars you wouldn't want to miss. Guys like Joe Lazon, Rory McDonald, Mike Perry, etc. My number is 27. Thanks for the videos. Jason, Jason, that is a great question. Um, and I'm actually glad you asked this. Because this is something that um, I've been wanting to talk about a little bit. So to understand, I think to really understand this question, we really got to understand what the what our market is and where our market is uh, in terms of maturity. This market, the UFC card market, is so so immature. It's very young. It has not had any time at all uh, in the big picture. To hasn't really had time to mature itself out and uh, give us a really clear picture of, of what direction it's gonna go and how parallel it may run or may not run to other sports and how they did. So knowing that we're in the infancy stages, right now, Mike Perry, Joe Lazon, Rory McDonald, uh, you know, these guys already are popular. They can sell, they, they sell now. I've been selling, I've sold every single one of these people before recently. So, all right, well, Jason, this is a great question. Um, as I talked about, you really got to under, I think to answer this question, we really got to understand where the, where the market's at and, and look at this from the understanding that the market is in its infancy stages. I know I mentioned this a lot, but it's incredibly important whenever you're talking about a, a market. If a market is young, that changes everything. Any question you want to ask, any uh, you know future um, speculation that you know you want to make, it that gravely affects it. So knowing that we're in a baby market, keep that in mind. Anything can change, and I think that it should. Oh, it's going to be for the better. Uh, you know, I, that's where our, for sure all my marbles are. But um, when we talk about guys, the future long-term value of, you know, guys who aren't champs, and perhaps you mentioned this because, um, and maybe not, but in one of my videos I had mentioned about the longevity of fighters, such as like, say, Anderson Silva. He's a champion, even though, well, he's going to fight again. But after this fight, I doubt he fights again. So but he's always going to be popular. Or how about GSP? All the new fans that have come on board in the last year or two years, um, they know who GSP is and they like GSP, you know, because he's still marketed. So a lot of the past champs and past, um, you know, superstars who maybe didn't even quite get a title shot uh, are, are going to be remembered. And we can see that at least today, at least the evidence of today's market suggests that um, these people will hold their value. We're able to sell these people now um, with it being so young. So when we talk about what five years down the road, 10 years down the road, even then, 
we're not talking about an old market. You have to understand uh, baseball cards and football cards have been around for a long time. A long time. UFC cards have not. It's so young. So when we talk at least five, ten years down the road, I would be very surprised, especially anybody, any of these guys or any of the other guys from, you know, maybe now back are going to be looked at as kind of the pioneers. Now, we know that the pioneers are more like the Dan Severns and uh, Hoist Gracie, Ken Shamrock, guys like that, Tank Abbott, some of the OGs in the game. Um, but it's also true for these guys because the sport has evolved so much. It's still kind of finding where it's going to settle and how things are going to be done. Uh, so these guys are still kind of pioneers, and I think that down the road, all of these superstars, they won't be forgotten, um, even if they haven't had a title fight. But guys like Rory McDonald and Robbie Lawler together, I mean, these kind of fights. Carlos Condit, you know, people look at the Carlos Condit, not, not many people uh, talked about him whatsoever prior to his fight. And then he comes out of the woodwork and he has a fight. Everybody's on board. So I think it helps as well. A lot of these guys stick around. They do coaching like Joe Lazan has a nice gym. I do think they have longevity. I think that if any point, especially kind of now moving forward, um, luckily a couple of these guys are still fighting, but if someone gets to be really popular or the hype train gets going, uh, I don't think they'll be forgotten anytime soon. And I don't think that their cards will ever lose value so long as they keep a positive image. A great example of that would be um, Tyron Woodley. Uh, unfortunately for you Tyron Woodley fans, uh, or oh, here's a better example, Sean O'Malley. So you have somebody that's massive, massive, and then they do or say something that kind of ruins their public outlook. Now, so let's talk about Sean O'Malley. If he never fights again in five years, you think anybody was going to know or give a shit who Sean O'Malley is? Definitely not. For sure not. <clears throat> now, he, you know, I'm not comparing uh, Sean O'Malley to... Rory McDonald or some of these other legends, but uh, I'm just saying you get a really popular person um, as long as they can end their career on a positive note uh, with the hype train, with the mainstream, that's what affects it. Honestly, a lot of this boils down to that. Uh, unfortunate for us, the, whoever the mainstream crowd is currently digging or, or you know, is into that's who's going to be popular that's whose cards fetch the most value there's not a poll that goes around and polls card collectors and says hey who do you guys want to collect the most right so the how is value set it's completely set off how how well a fighter is doing or even not just how popular they are that's it so i would say these guys are safe bets um i definitely collect a lot of the older guys i i do i I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think all these guys are going to be looked at like Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth, um, and some of those older cards. Now we're talking way down the line, but these are the first guys. So in my head, and we've seen this in every sport, uh, it wouldn't make sense for all of these guys to be huge names and pull huge numbers way down the line how far down the line i couldn't tell you it could be 50 years i have no idea if it ever happens but that's what i think will happen so i think it's a great idea to collect people like that especially because they're not going to be making cards of them anymore so uh you know like look at carlos condit's a great example he just came back and had a fight people loved him people are now looking up carlos condit uh, videos on youtube this and that so if you have carlos condit cards your stock just went up so that's another thing you have to look out for. You know, they might make a surprise appearance. All they got to do is pop in once. And then everybody who's now part of the sport uh, who didn't know, you know, who that individual was now knows who they are. All right, Jason, I hope that answered your question. Um, quite a bit of rambling there. I apologize about that. That's sometimes how we get things done. My number is 27. Okay. So we're going to fast forward this. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 
about uh, the cards that are in here. But there you go. There's a Walt Harris rookie card. He is getting ready to fight next weekend on the Khabib, Khabib and uh, Gaethje card. So good grab there. Congratulations to uh, Jason. All right. Next up is Anthony. Anthony, 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 what did you have to say? Loving the channel, man. My question for you is, which three fighters do you think are currently undervalued at the moment? My number is 35. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Anthony with the Android Get Outlook for Android. He went high dollar after seeing me trash the Yahoo guy. All right, Anthony. Um, three fighters who are undervalued at the moment. Well, there's certainly a lot of people who are undervalued. Uh, but I will give you these three because these three, it annoys the hell out of me, uh, how undervalued they are. I'm going to go Chuck Liddell. I'm going to go Randy Couture and I'm going to go with Rich Franklin. Those three guys should be pulling in huge numbers and they don't. Uh, so that's who I'm going to go with. I think that'll change in the future. Again, I'm going to give the Babe Ruth speech, but for now, the prices of those three individuals, I think, are extraordinarily undervalued. All right, my number is 35. Thanks, Anthony. Make that one nice and quick. Okay, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Maurice Green, Future Stars rookie card. Nice card. Congratulations to Anthony. Hey, we've got one more to go, uh, but do not um, forget, if you won one of these, email me your shipping information to macecollectibles at gmail.com so that I can uh, get these shipped out to you. It's hard to track people down, so if you don't contact me, uh, there's a chance I'm not going to send you a card because I'll forget or I won't uh, be able to reach out to you. So find your email amongst the masses so if you could please if you win please uh email me your shipping info macy collectibles at gmail.com same place you emailed your question and let me know where you would like your card shipped all right on to the last one. Oh, and i didn't forget about uh i did forget your name but the gentleman from last monday i'm gonna look you up here in a second you i still have not drawn your card from last monday I didn't forget about you. I'm going to get you right after this one. This question here from oh, Team Chrome Chrome Collect. That's right. Okay. So question, are printing plates a good investment? I thought this was a great question. I, and I actually i am probably going to make a video about this. Purely asking for investment purposes. Also, would popular fighters printing plates be a good buy even if it is a base card, seeing as they are all one of one? My number is 88. Best regards, Chrome from Chrome Collect. Uh, and Chrome Collect, I believe, is Mr. Tyler. I could be wrong, but I think that's Tyler Chrome from over there at Chrome Collect. Uh, it, Tyler, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Tyler. Anyhow, uh, they got a, a YouTube channel. They're getting started or he's getting going or whatever. So check him out, Chrome Collect, um, for other UFC and perhaps other sports. I'm not quite sure, but uh, shout out. Check that guy out. Anyhow... I'm not going to get in depth on this one because this is a really good question and this is something I've been kind of thinking about making a video on anyhow. Printing plates. Man, what a that's an insane topic. All the printing plates come out, they're one of one. Some of their values are insanely low. And the same it goes for the baseball card world. For whatever reason, printing plates do not fetch the one of one value that they should. We're going to get into that. I'm going to make a whole video. So I know this doesn't help anybody who's watching this and wants to uh, know the answer to this gentleman's question, but that's the way she's going to go. His number is 88. I'm going to make a video on that. Printing plates. Eighty-three, eighty-four, eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-seven, and eighty-eight. Okay, this is the T.J. Dillashaw short print photo variation. If you'll notice, this card is a refractor and does not say refractor at the top. 
That is one way you can tell on 2019 Chrome if it is a short print photo variation. Uh, the other way is, let me grab this other card here. If you look at the code on the bottom, it will all end in 34869. If it's a short print, it will end in 34892. So that's how you can tell. Congratulations, Tyler uh, or Team Chrome. I keep saying Tyler, it might not even be who I think it is. Uh, Chrome Collect. I feel like that's Tyler. Anyhow, uh, congratulations to you. Make sure you send me your shipping info and we will get that shipped out. Unfortunately, no monster hits through that. That's crazy to me. But we've got one more to get to from last week. If you remember on last Monday, we had a gentleman who won, uh, but he did not send a number. And he has sent me a number. I'm trying to look it up right now. Uh, yes, it was Brian. Your number was 88. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? That's, <laughs> that's the number we just drew. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, well, let's see what 87 and 89 was because if the, either one of those is a good card, I'm going to let you choose. I'm going to let you choose. I'm going to draw the 88th and the 89th. Oh, there it is. So it was another short print and uh 87 looks like a tj dillashaw uh knockout blue wave to 50 number to 50 th oh number to 99 apologize 35 of 99 so if you would like either one of these cards you may select which one you want uh brian and i will send this to you if you do not want either one of those, I will let you pick another number since your number was already chosen. You cannot buy a bucket, poor guy. So sorry about that. Um, I'll get you squared up. Let me know, Brian, you want either one of those, I'll hook you up. If not, send me another number. We'll make it happen again. All righty. What do we have left here? That's it. We got some questions answered. I know this was a little bit uh, crazy, that's probably because it is now 6.37 a.m. I started this video around 5.45 because I've got to go to work today and I promised you all that I was going to make this video and we are getting it done. That's going to do it, folks, on Wednesday. What are we doing on Wednesday? Oh, on Wednesday, we are going to be having our first look at the new set coming out next month, uh, the new UFC cards coming out next month. We're going to take a look at that and probably crack a little something maybe maybe not and uh and then we'll be right back here friday as well so back to the normal schedule monday wednesday friday macecollectibles.com mace collectibles on ebay and mercari uh send your questions in for monday mailbag um i will do my best to answer them i know this week <laughs> This was not the most informative episode, uh, but again, it's super early and promise fulfilled. So <laughs> I don't give a f but all right, folks, I appreciate you so much. We'll see you right back here on Wednesday, Macy collectibles.com Macy collectibles on eBay until next time. Take care.